it's time to get a new truck. I'm going from this 2006 to this new 2019 Dodge Ram Bighorn. This is a quick review of the exterior and interior. Let's go. I purchased this Dodge Ram 1500 brand new in 2006. It has 140,000 miles and I needed an update. The 2019 Dodge Ram has gone through a major update in the interior and exterior. There are several models with different features. This is the Dodge Ram Bighorn 4x4 5.7 liter Hemi. There are higher end Rams with more features and luxury such as the Laramie Unlimited. So if there isn't a feature mentioned, do your research online. Dodge did do it right this time and these trucks are loaded. But let's take a look at this one and I'll let you know what it has. It's a really nice thing that the backup camera is embedded into the tailgate latch. This gives a great viewpoint and angle when backing up. But one of the things I like about this truck is when you lock everything, the tailgate locks. I have to unlock the car to lower the gate. The gate is much lighter than my old Ram and has shocks so it doesn't just drop. This truck came with a protective bed liner and rails but also there are these LEDs on both sides of the bed. The lights can be turned on and off with the switch or in the driver's cabin. You can see I can easily lift the gate because of how light it is and the shocks. Let's look at the back seat. Dodge added these hidden storage spaces on the floor. They're on both sides and have a plastic bucket insert. You can basically put anything in here, drinks with ice, tools, etc. There are also these tie downs. The bucket is removable, so it's easy to wash. Also, I really like how the seats easily fold up for more room for putting something in the back. My older truck, those seats wouldn't move at all. Driving this 5.7 liter, it moves and is actually really quiet. When stepping on the gas, you hear a good rumble and it takes off. The truck has parking sensors on the front and back bumpers and on the sides to make sure there is good coverage from all angles if you're getting close to something. This model has fog lights and has the grill white to match the vehicle's color. Some of the grills are all black and some are chrome. It depends on which models and features you get. I like the shape of the hood. It's pretty nice. It's just not the usual straight across. Taking a look at the dashboard, the radio has a large 8-inch screen. The higher-end Laramie has a much larger screen, roughly twice the size of this one. An easy push start. A quick push turns the electrical system on, and if you're stepping on the brake, the car will start. This came with a free year of Sirius radio and Uconnect software. 
that allows you to connect your Android or iPhone. I found Uconnect to be a bit limiting. You can't use all of your apps, just the basic ones like texting, maps, phone calls, and Pandora. I wanted to be able to have the kids watch a movie on Netflix or YouTube, but this feature is blocked with newer versions of Uconnect. Also, video files weren't recognized through the USB connections. Navigation of the radio is really easy to use. Controls at the bottom and the stations at the top. These toggle controls allow turning on and off rear and front bumper sensors if they're annoying you. Another thing is, is there's two glove compartments. And with the overhead, there is the usual cabin lights, but also these switches for assistance and SOS if you're in trouble. The SOS does require a subscription. Three built-in garage remote options and lighted vanity mirrors on the driver and the passenger side. Also, there are six of these small speakers on the ceiling. The salesman said these are for Bluetooth. You can see two in the front on each side and one in the back on each side. The interesting thing are these controls allowing for adjusting the foot pedals, making them farther or closer. The parking brake is electronic and you can hear the system locking the wheels in place. It sounds like some robotic piece of equipment or hydraulics. This is for the rear in-bed LED lights I was showing earlier. The top are your front fog lights. In the back of the steering wheel, you can control the radio volume and change stations so you don't have to take your hands off the wheel. It also has the ability for voice commands. The truck comes with cruise control, but I also noticed after I purchased, this empty space on the left side is reserved for adaptive cruise control. Basically, you're in cruise and the truck keeps a precise distance of the car in front of you adjusting as the car gets closer or further away. The instrument panel is semi-digital. It's hard to tell in this video which is which, but the center has completely digital readouts where the battery voltage, miles, and oil pressure are and above. The one thing I wish this truck had was a memory setting for the seats. Maybe this is offered on the higher end Limited or Laramie models. There are a lot of USB plugs. You can see these dual use connectors. There are two more in the back seat and another in the storage console. The center console has lots of storage and adjustments. The rear center window is electric for opening and closing. The truck has a ton of cup holders. 
front and back center consoles and two in each side door. The doors also have two levels of storage space. Back seat, two center cup holders, two forward cup holders and two in the door. Also as mentioned the dual USB charging for the back seat. All of these connectors connect to the radio for audio playback. The side mirrors you can control them to slant in if parking in tight spots. At night, there are lights underneath the mirrors that light up the door. The key is pretty basic. Lock, unlock, and if I select this twice and hold down the second time, the car will start for remote starting. Then a panic button, or if you like, a find my car button. One of the things I noticed that there's a button on the side of the key ring. I discovered this ejects the key. Well, that's really it. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough and please subscribe and give a thumbs up. Till next time.